Well, hey, what's up, everyone? Welcome back. Uh, we are live. How's everyone doing out there? Got some thumbs up already. Got some people in the house. Um, today's going to be a fun one. Got my friend uh, Henry Howard on, uh, who just completed an FKT. Uh, and uh, going to have him on and um, just kind of talk about his process behind why, uh, when he picked it, uh, and, uh, how he did it, how he, uh, accomplished it. Um, and then we've got, um, going to do question and answer. So go ahead and put in questions. Uh, we'll be answering them together. And then afterwards, um, I'll be answering any of your questions about anything else. Um, what's up, Marcel? How's it going? See you there. Um, and, uh, yeah, gonna be a fun one. Fun. Uh, what is today? Tuesday. <laughs> Uh, does it even, uh, who's keeping track anymore anyway, really though, but all right, going to roll the intro and then we'll be back. I will be back in just a second. So sit tight. All right, back. Um, yeah, so a couple more people just joined. Thanks for joining. Uh, again, have my friend Henry Howard on. Going to be talking about his FKT uh, and going through an article that he wrote recently uh, for his website and blog, runspirited.com. So that's going to be fun. Um, yeah, what's going on, guys? Uh, happy to see everyone here tonight. Um, we, uh, yeah, it's been... Uh, it's been, it's been, it's been weird. Uh, Marsal says, uh, are you doing the vertical limitless challenge from Aravipa? Uh, I don't, I don't think so. Um, I really wanted to, I wanted to kind of do the one day challenge. Um, but I just, I don't know. I just don't, I might, I still might. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see about that. Uh, it would be really fun. I haven't been training vertical at all though. And so it would be really just going out and just putting myself through the ringer for a whole day basically. And we'll see. Um, but yeah, also, uh, really, uh, big news just about done with the, uh, triple crown training for ultra documentary series. Uh, so that is going to be really awesome once it's out. Really excited for everyone to see it. Um, but yeah, we're going to get started. I'm going to give Henry a call here. And uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about all things with his new FKT. And um, I'm going to be getting him more. Oh, shoot. Sorry. <laughs> That's really loud. <laughs> all right. Let's see if he answers. There he is. Hey, Ryan. What's up, Henry? How's it going? I'm well. How are you doing? Doing all right. Yeah. Cool. Well, Henry, you are fresh off setting a new FKT, and we're going to talk about that. But um, how are you doing? Are you feeling okay? I am. Recovery has been really great. Uh -huh. I um, got up uh, Sunday the day after the FKT, and yeah. just real minimal soreness of my heel. Um, but you know, I was walking around fine and, um, felt great and did several hours of yard work on Sunday. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Okay. So we'll talk about the FKT and what was involved in it and all that. Um, but first give me a little bit of backstory about like how long you've been running, uh, what you do, uh, during the day, what you do for fun, um, what kind of races have you done in the past? Uh, just so people get an idea of kind of who you are and, uh, what kind of runner you are. Sure. So, um, I literally had on my bucket list to run a marathon and it got to be, uh, 2011 and I was, uh, in my early forties at that point and figured that I'm, I should probably start pretty soon or this marathon thing is never going to happen. Um, the first time I went out for a run, I went out my front door, went down the street and did about a mile and a half loop. 
I stopped three times during that run, um, puked in a driveway when I got <laughs> back and thought I was going to die. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. So I, I realized I needed, uh, to work obviously on my fitness. So what I did was I, um, this is when we, um, games were really big and I had a friend who recommended doing the, we fit mm. after nine week real basic exercise, but enough to, you know, keep me going, um, you know, uh, almost every night, if not every night. And when I was done with that first initial program, I went back out to the same run, never stopped, felt fine, thought, okay, I, that's what I needed to, you know, have some sort of a base after years of, uh, not really doing a whole lot. Did a 5k pretty soon after that, uh, that fall I did my first half marathon and then set my sights on that marathon, did that in 2012 and, um, wasn't just one and done. I thought I would be one and done, but I kept seeking new challenges, got into Boston, uh, after qualifying for the second time and really got hooked on, uh, trails and ultras and, and just love the community and just enjoy, uh, trails more than roads for, for a number of reasons, the community, the getting out in nature and that kind of thing. Um, I do some road races still. Um, but I'm, really interested in, in, you know, exploring trails and exploring what I can do in, in those longer distances. And yeah. well, longest distance I did was, um, last, uh, last November. Um, you know, the next big goal for me is to qualify for Western States. So I got my first ticket in, uh, last year's drawing, um, in my, one or two percent chance didn't get drawn, but yeah. I was able to uh, complete the Rio del Lago 100 as my first hundred, and, and that was pretty amazing. So that's uh, that's kind of the long and the short of it, I guess. Nice. Why'd you pick Rio del Lago? Um, part of it is on the Western States course, and nice. um, I had been out there before. My first 50 miler was the American River 50, and this is the same race director that puts on, uh, Rio and I had a great experience at American river. And, um, you know, I had a friend who has done hundreds before he was willing to pace and crew me. Uh, he lives out in Colorado. So I needed something out his way sort of, um, to do. And it, it fell in uh, with other things I had on the calendar and it was just, it's a beautiful course, really well done. And, uh, it was just amazing. Awesome. So then when did you start, uh, looking at FKTs? And we'll, so tell me, tell me about, tell me about what, how you got your sights on the one you picked. So like everyone else, you know, been dealing with the coronavirus and, um, staying in place and being safe and that kind of thing. I was very, very fortunate where my, uh, most recent race was in March, kind of when everything was starting to bubble up and people were starting to take precautions. And the race I was signed up for actually went off as scheduled. And so I did that. I had a really good race. And I, I kind of knew, and I don't remember the timing of when my next race was canceled officially, but it was scheduled for April. And when that came down, I I had all this fitness built up and you know, nowhere to go. So I, you know, began to think about an FKT and, you know, where it would be and what it would be and that kind of thing. And looking at the official website, I think at the time there were only seven or eight in all of Indiana mm -hmm. and, you know, needing to have some place close. Um, you know, I looked at the ones that were there. It didn't seem feasible to challenge any of those. Um, and a local trail that we've both been on didn't have one. And I thought, well, this is great. This is a place I'm pretty familiar with and it's close by. I know that I can do an out and back so I don't have to worry about, um, you know, point to point where I'd have to figure out transportation one way or the other and involving other people. I could just park at one end, do the out and back and be done with it. Um, and so that's kind of where I was at. 
And so I had, um, you know, like I said, I had all this fitness built up and I, um, it, you know, took a little bit of time off after the 50 K in March and, you know, kind of set my sights on that and gave myself enough time to really get familiar with the part of the trail that I had not been familiar with. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty flat. Uh, say there was a trail hiker who said it's, Oh, it's about 12.5 miles. And the Northern part, which I'm very familiar with is probably about seven or eight miles. Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to spend a little bit of time, uh, on the Southern part, uh, which is mostly dirt trail, single track. And there's a section, there's a paved section that starts on the Southern half before it crosses the bridge and continues north. And that's about a mile paved section. Um, yeah. so I just wanted to kind of understand the logistics there and, and also which end to start with. Cause I actually, when I began, had envisioned starting at the Northern parks. So I was more familiar with that. Um, but as I realized that that half of it was much more, uh, populated, um, even during this time, I wanted to end where it was going to be less populated to avoid people, not only for, um, you know, being able to get around them quickly, but also just trying to avoid, um, people as much as possible yeah. during the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this, uh, FKT, and I'm going to go to this, uh, website right here, uh, okay. throw this up here. So this is the, this is the official fastest known time website. I mean, go in here and, uh, I'm just going to search for Wabash Heritage Trail. There it is. And your name's going to pop up here. So, <laughs> Uh, this trail, uh, kind of talk about the trail. It's a, it's a 13.25 mile trail. Uh, and you set the FKT of an out and back. Mm -hmm. Um, so just over, uh, just over a marathon. Uh, when, so how did you plan on what day it was going to be and, uh, what time you were going to go out? Um, talk me through kind of the planning of the logistics of that. I know you kind of started that with, uh, about how, where you wanted to start and end. Um, but was there any other details that went into it? Sure. Um, yeah, once I was able to get on the section of the trail that I was not as familiar with, I, um, you know, I decided, like I said, to start at that end. So I spent some time, um, only like two or three trail runs, um, as practice runs. So, you know, once I identified, what trial I wanted to do. That was probably early to mid April. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to give myself enough time to build back up, um, the mileage where I knew I could do it again, thinking it was going to be about 25 based on that one comment on that website. Um, but I just gave myself enough time to be able to do some long runs out there and explore the trail and, you know, get an idea for, um, it's not a complicated trail, um, but just being familiar you know, with which way to go essentially. Right. Um, and then knowing where I could also, you know, pick up some speed. There are some sandy sections down South mm -hmm. and there's also some, it, it's, it's completely runnable. Um, I mean, the only times I really stopped were, um, to take, photos at the halfway point just to prove that I got there yeah. uh, and then run back. And there's a few, there's like some stairs that I, I walked up instead of ran, but it's very runnable. So just having that confidence as well as knowing the logistics um, definitely helped out. And so I just set um, the day I had um, something I was looking at doing personal wise the following weekend. Um, so I thought that would be a good way to kind of, do my FKT when I did. And then, um, I ended up changing what I, what I planned to do. But at that point it was just a, a nice, um, uh, break the weekend after to do it then. So that's kind of, um, you know, a combination of, of getting myself comfortable enough with the FKT site, 
yeah. trail that I was going to run and just balancing it with other, uh, personal stuff I had going on. Yeah. And so, you know, it was, uh, like I said, it's very runnable. It was kind of a surprise to me that, um, thinking it was 12.5 miles one way. And then as I got to, um, a mile marker that said 5.5 miles to what would be my turnaround point, my watch said 7.8 or something. So, yeah. Uh, it, <laughs> You know, it was only another uh, uh, so it didn't you know uh, it didn't affect me at all. But it was just interesting knowing that it's just going to be a little further today. So yeah, yeah, and then it was probably nice to hit an actual marathon distance. Yeah, yeah. Technically an ultra too, but yeah, um, technically I'll an ultra. Yeah. It on. <laughs> yeah, and I like. Um, showing the map on the screen here from the FKT website, this section down towards the bottom, which was, so you, the turnaround point was on the, in the South end, right? Yeah. No, I oh, started, you started on the South. end. The yeah. That South yeah. end is, I, I used to run on this trail all the time. Uh, and it got so sandy and one year it was totally flooded. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like really flooded bad. And there, then that summer there was a ton of mosquitoes and I just, um, I haven't been back in a while, but I need to try this trail out again. Um, yeah, but tell me about, um, planning like gear, um, and then, uh, like nutrition, hydration, all that. How did you manage that? And then what was the weather like? Um, cause that plays into it too. Right. Yeah. I'm glad you actually brought up the mosquitoes because that's something um, that I learned during, uh, I think my last uh, trial run there was they had started to come out. So I made a mental note to um, put on some bug spray and I, yeah. um, you know, had that in my car. So as I got warmed up in the parking lot, I uh, made sure to put that on and some suntan lotion because even though I was starting right at dusk or um, right at dawn mm -hmm. uh, when the sun came out, you know, I, I, I was estimating about four hours and I was pretty, pretty much right on with that. Um, <clears throat> then I was able to, um, you know, have that protection as the sun, you know, rose during the day um, when I finished around 1030. As far as gear and that kind of thing goes, that was another good uh, lesson learned. I have, um, in one of my trial runs, I had uh, Nike Tigers, which I really like, um, but they didn't have the cushioning and support that I needed on the paved sections. Mm -hmm. um, my heel really took a beating from one of those um, when I did that, so I, I used, um, uh, I switched to Hoka Challenger and they really, during the practice runs and the actual FKT, uh, really transitioned well between um, the paved part and the dirt part and, and vice versa, protected my heel. And, uh, you know, we're, we're definitely solid through, you know, whether it was a little bit of mud that was there or those sandy sections that you mentioned. So that was important to kind of know what footwear was going to um, do the best for me. Um, as far as, um, other gear, I, I had an ultra spire pack, uh, that I wear. I, I'm fortunate to be one of their ambassadors and they've, they've done a great job in having gear that really works well. Um, I had, mm -hmm. I'm not a big fan of bladder, so I had two water bottles, um, with me that was, um, plenty cause it was a warmer day than we've been used to here. Mm -hmm. Um, it was a really nice day. Um, got up close to 80. I think by the time I was done, it was in the high 60s. So it had been a while since I had run in that heat. Um, so that, that was a little bit of a difference. But, um, you know, knowing what the forecast was definitely definitely helped out in that. So um, that pack served me well. Um, plenty of pockets. Uh, and, you know, also with the coronavirus, um, and having water fountains turned off, that was also something yeah. important to plan for. Mm -hmm. Um, especially with an out and back, I either had to stash bottles elsewhere or just bring it up with me at the start. And I, I had enough, um, 
uh, to go out and do the out and back. So that worked out. Um, I fueled with honey stinger. Uh, I am gluten free as a, as a celiac. So I really, um, like the fact that honey stinger has gluten free waffles and gels, which I had with me. Mm -hmm. They are very easy to digest. Um, and, and eat literally on the run. I've, uh, use those everything from half marathons up until, you know, part of the nutrition I had during the hundred that I did. Uh, and also so they, they were great, um, being able to, um, you know, provide an option for me that, that works great for my fueling. Yeah. Um, beyond that, I wear a Coros watch and I've, I've experimented with other watches before. Um, to me, nothing beats a Coros. They, uh, the battery life is amazing. Um, I haven't even looked to see how much is left because I was only out for four hours and it's, it, it probably didn't even make a dent in it. When I did the hundred, um, when I, and I didn't do it fast, it was, uh, 26 hours in the mountains. And when I got back, the battery life was at 23%, which is just, incredible pretty good yeah nice yeah so and then did you have a uh you needed to you needed to have a goal time uh Mm -hmm. so were you watching that the whole time were you was it was it close were you stressing out how was it when you're actually on the run or did you enjoy it the whole time or how was that how was the actual run it was good i started out a little slow just getting warmed up Mm -hmm. um and I, th- I think it might have also been the sandy section that you mentioned because that was at yeah. the beginning and, and toward the end as well too. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I got into a, a flow, uh, you know, things started to click really well. Um, once I was getting into a, a definite runnable section, and then I hit um, after I think it was about four point seven miles, then I hit a paved section which was mostly paved for roughly three miles. And so that was, I was able to pick up some speed there. And that's also about the point where, as I mentioned, um, I had the realization that this is actually going to be 26 and a half, uh, and and not 25. My, my A goal was 345. My B goal was four based on that, um, estimated mileage. So I backed that off. I was thinking about a nine minute pace um, Mm -hmm. that I'd be able to sustain. So you know, I kind of reconfigured that and was aiming for, um, you know, a, a 358 as an A goal or a, you know, 413 just to kind of counterbalance the extra distance. So I was, I knew that the pace I was going at, I would be able to um, to handle. I got to the turnaround point at, I think it was 204 or something like that. So I was mm-hmm. pretty much right on at that point. And I knew that coming back, um, I'd, I'd be able to, uh, you know, sustain what I did, if not improve a little bit. So I was still hoping for a sub four at that point. Um, but you know, I think one thing that I am really kind of stoked about is that each mile from 17 on, I was under that nine minutes. So I definitely Mm -hmm. finished strong and I, you know, just talked to my coach after I'm like, you know, I might not have pushed hard enough because, you know, I, I, my best miles were my last miles and, you know, on Sunday I felt completely fine. Yeah. Um, so, you know, uh, but overall really happy about it. Um, it'll get broken at some point. It's definitely, um, you, you know, going to be something that when someone who's, um, you know, got some faster legs and wants to do an out and back on it, they can certainly take it down. And, and that's great. That's, you know, what's fun about FKTs is that, you know, somebody can go out and set it and then someone else can, you know, on a different day, see what they can do to, to, to beat it. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, got a couple questions. Uh, hapless guitar photography said what trail, <laughs> um, and it was the Wabash heritage trail. And right. then uh, Chase the Summit says, Koros, how is your heart rate accuracy with your watch and which model do you wear? 
Those are good questions. I have the Coros Apex and, um, you know, beyond the, uh, the battery life, um, it's also incredibly simple to use. I never have a problem uh, syncing it with Strava. Uh, Garmin, you know, every once in a while my Garmin would, um, you know, give me fits and wouldn't upload automatically and that kind of thing. And Garmin support was great when that happened, but um, I've honestly never had that problem with Coros. Um, as far as the heart rate, um, Hold on, I'll go back and um, repeat that last sentence. You kind of broke up for a second. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I don't put a lot of stake into my heart rate reading, but no matter what watch I'm wearing, um, just with the advice uh, from my coach and others who say, you know, the if your heart rate monitor is on your wrist, it can be a little fluky. If you have a chest strap, that that works best. Um, yeah. So I I kind of reference it, but I don't put a lot of stake into it. Like I've I've gone out for easy runs and seen both where it's you know I've been in zone two and three for ninety five percent of the time, which looks legitimate. And there have been other times when I felt that I was at a very similar uh, pace or effort and it's showing me in, you know, zone four for 74% of the time, which I, I know is just not true. So, mm -hmm. yeah, wrist-based sensors are hard to get right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Well, if anybody else has questions for Henry, be sure to put them in the chat. Uh, wanted to also... Um, wanted to, uh, just see, like, uh, ask you, do you have more FKTs that you're going to attempt or, uh, what's, so what's the plan? What's the plan for you coming up? Um, right now I have a race in July, uh, in Indianapolis. Um, that's an eight hour, uh, in the heat of the day in July in Indianapolis. And that was, uh, a deferral from last year, um, uh, so I, I've been looking forward to that. The last I knew the race director said it was still going to happen. So that's kind of the next goal, but I'm also looking at if that doesn't happen, then using the training that I'll uh, use from now until then, you know, and substituting an FKT um, attempt somewhere. Um, if, if that race doesn't go off, which if I was going to bet, I would say it, probably not going to happen given yeah. how things are progressing. Um, so nothing specific in mind at this point, but that's plan B, but I think the smart money is on uh, plan B at this point. What was the, what was that race called that you just said? Is it the, it's the eight hour endurance run. It's okay. uh, Down held at Butler. At Butler yeah. University. Okay. Yeah. There's like, isn't that one the one where they have like two laps? One of them's like three miles, and one of them's like five or something like that. And or uh, maybe I'm off, but close. One is uh, three, uh, and the other is shorter. It's like one point eight, okay. and you can choose how many to do. Yeah. Um, of each, and yeah, the most mileage. Um, yeah. They go by most overall mileage, so you could do all the short ones or all the long ones uh -huh. or whatever combination. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, July. I don't know. It's um, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> um, but yeah, so definitely. I mean, con huge congrats on that FKT. Like that's really cool. Thank um, you. Definitely. I think FKTs are something that has sparked a lot of interest recently, as you mentioned, with all the races being shut down. And um, I just think I just think it's super cool. Um, I, there's one that I really want to do, but I can't. I can't do it alone. Um, <laughs> and I don't want to like ask people to come like crew me and stuff, but I just thought it was so cool that you just set this one, especially on the Wabash heritage trail that, um, is a trail I've been running for years and years and, uh, not as much recently, but, um, it's, uh, it's definitely one of those kind of older trails in town that everyone knows about and everyone runs on. So that's really, really cool that you got that. And uh, one of the most famous ultra runners actually ran on it when she lived here, uh, Camille Harris. Yeah. So if she yeah. ever comes back, she's going to 
Yeah. Fuck that FKT. <laughs> yeah, we gotta get her to we gotta get her to come back and uh I mean that would be quite an honor though to lose your FKT to Camille Heron. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Okay, cool. So and then right before right before I let you go, I wanted to kind of uh just ask uh uh, we'll just kind of talk through this article that you wrote the other day that I thought was really cool. And uh, we're showing your website right here on uh, the video now. It's uh, runspirited.com. But you wrote this article called How Runners Can Stay Motivated While Social Distancing. Um, and I just thought I would just go through uh, the bold points and then see if you had any comments that you wanted to add. And um just any advice, uh, maybe things that you found while writing this, but you said a couple things you can do are reset your goals, uh, stick to a routine, pick up a meditation habit, uh, keep challenging yourself and stay updated with the community. Uh, so you actually did, you've been doing all of these obviously. Uh, and then especially with your FKT, uh, you reset your goals and did all of that. So just, do you have any, so you know, any comments on this, um, uh, just kind of encouragement you can give to other people. Cause pretty much everybody watching this right now, uh, unless you're watching the replay, like a year from now, hopefully we're not <laughs> in the same situation. Um, uh, right. but, uh, yeah. What are your thoughts on that? And, you know, uh, what was, uh, how can you in- encourage us a little bit with some of these things that you mentioned in your article? Sure. Um, yeah, I think the big one is resetting goals. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'm a coach as well. And it's, you know, it's hard, it can be hard for us to motivate ourselves. Um, you know, when there's literally nothing on the calendar and that, you know, we, you know, some people are runners cause they want the shiny bling or they want the challenge of a Boston qualifier or a PR or winning their age group or, you know, whatever it is. And, and not having that is, is definitely hard, and I, I get that. And that's that's kind of why I wanted to start with resetting goals because, okay, we know that races aren't going to happen, and they probably won't happen until the fall, maybe. Um, but, you know, we're, we're runners, and I, you know, one thing I try to translate to mine is that it's, it's the day in the day out. That commitment is what builds us as runners and it's the joy of the run, whether it's trails, roads, track, treadmill, whatever, you know, that's, that's where we build up not only our fitness, but also, you know, the emotional well being we get out of running, um, the therapy, if you will. Yeah. And so, you know, and it, it's, it's hard doing a, 20 mile solo training run for a marathon is hard, but you know, we need that celebration day. And, you know, even though there's not going to be someone standing at the finish line under uh, a clock with red lights and ready to hand out a medal, you know, we can still create something for ourselves that, um, gives us that day of celebration and maybe it's an FKT. Maybe it's a virtual race. There's a lot of race directors now who are doing virtual races and, you know, are offering that swag and yeah, we can't line up with our friends, you know, new or old friends at the starting line and and have that shared experience right next to somebody, but we can have that shared experience you know, in our neighborhoods, um, you know, some people are, you know, doing these on their balconies or, uh, we know wherever they can. Um, but I think just resetting the goal and whether it's a virtual race, whether it's an FKT, whether it's just doing something on your own that that challenges you and helps get you out of bed at four in the morning to go put in that five, six, eight miles. Um, you know, we do it for fitness. We do it for that, you know, mental clarity. And, you know, we do it for that sense of accomplishment when we check that goal off our list. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. And I think your next point, sticking to a routine is, uh, essential too. Um, I found that in my own, uh, daily life during this time. Um, 
I couldn't do it if I didn't have a routine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's important. I've been working from home for six weeks, I think now. Uh And, you know, getting up at the same time, getting my workout in, eating, showering, getting dressed. Some days it is a sweatshirt. Some days it's, you know, more of a a dress shirt. But, you know, having that routine is definitely helpful. Um, The routine that incorporates running and, you know, whatever someone did before, obviously, for, say, teachers and truck drivers, because truck drivers still going out, hopefully, um, they're still able to work while a teacher is, you know, having to figure out how to do lesson planning um, and teach kids remotely. Um, You know, but I think having as much of a routine intact as possible is going to help us adjust to the new normal. And, you know, when it comes to running, um, you know, that that's true. If you are someone who runs before work and this coronavirus hit, you know, probably a good idea to keep it that way. If you're someone who, um, ran after work or during lunch, it's probably a good idea to, you know, kind of keep that, um, you know, keep that going just to try to maintain as much as we can before everything changed. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Henry, thanks for joining me tonight. Um, it was really fun having you on and big congrats to this FKT. Um, thanks for also just offering the encouragement to everybody with that article and all that. Um, yeah, my pleasure. And, um, my contact info is on the website and, yep. you know, you can certainly drop me a line from there or, um, I'll go back later and check the comments, see if there's any more questions in the, in the YouTube chat. But I appreciate you, uh, reaching out Ryan and, and having me on. This was great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, have a good night and All I'll right. talk to you again soon. I'll catch up soon. Okay. Okay. Take care. All right. Take care. Bye. All right. Well, thanks, uh, Henry, again for joining us. Uh, that was fun. Um, cool guy. I ran with him. I've ran with him quite a bit um, over the past couple years. Uh, he's uh, from the same town as me, um, but uh, obviously we can't meet in person to do this. So uh, I just thought that was super, super cool uh, that he just set an FKT, just went out and did it. Uh, it was pretty awesome. But uh, yeah, if you guys have any questions for me, like I'll stay on for a little bit. Um, ask me anything you want. Um, there is, there's a, there's an FKT that I really want to get out and do. Um, but it's, um, uh, it's not going to happen until I can get a crew. Uh, because, uh, well, I'll just, I'll just say, it. I'll just put it out there. <laughs> um, it's the Knobstone Trail. It's a 50 mile point to point, Southern Indiana. And right now, um, the, uh, the, uh, fastest known time on it is just under 10 hours. Uh, so I think it's got about seven and a half, so 7,500 feet of elevation vertical gain. Um, so a, that's a pretty stout fastest known time. Um, but it's one I want to go get. So putting it out there. I want to go get it, but I obviously need a crew. I'm not going to be able to do, I don't think I would want to attempt to do 50 miles solo and go fast. Uh, so I need a crew. I need a ride back to my car at the end too. Um, but yeah, Dylan says, are you taking questions? Yes, I am taking questions. So ask away. Uh, Eric, the red says tons of virtual races going on now. And you're right. Uh, it seems like they're popping up everywhere. Um, I just saw, uh, Laz has one, something about virtual run across Tennessee and he got, uh, last time I saw somebody post on social media that 17,000 people were signed up for this race. (laughs) And it's like over the course of two months, see if you can run, what is it? Uh, a thousand, is that a thousand K something like that? John true love says, plan it out. I'll crew you. Yes. 
Awesome, man. That's awesome. Uh, let's do it. Let's do it. Um, not soon because I need to train some vertical gain, but maybe this year sometime. We'll see what happens with races. Uh, Miguel asks, what's your trick uh, to blisters? I'm lucky not to experience them often, but when I do, they take a heavy toll. And yes, I agree with you, Miguel. Uh, they do take a, uh, they do take a heavy toll. Um, my, um, advice is, so, uh, blisters happen, start at the beginning, blisters happen because there's, uh, too much friction. Um, and that's as in-depth as I'm going to (laughs) get, because I don't want to get gross on this, but, uh, you need to reduce the amount of friction. So you need to get shoes that fit really well. Uh, and so you need to try a lot of different kinds of shoes. Uh, and then you need socks that, um, depending on your foot and your shoe, uh, some people can get away with like just Walmart cotton socks. Um, I've got a really good friend that never gets blisters and he just wears cotton white tube socks. (laughs) And I have no idea how it works, but I can't. If I did that, I would have blisters all the time. So I actually wear exoskin socks and love them. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. Uh, I just really, they're, they're incredible socks. Um, something's going on with them. They're, they're good, good socks. Uh, but I wear those and for the most part, I don't get blisters until I, and if I do, it's like closer to around like 50 miles or so. Uh, and at that point in a race, um, usually I can just, I've learned to just kind of deal with it. Um, but I do, sometimes I'll tape my toes. Um, one time I did that for hallucination 100, I taped my toes and, uh, one of the toes got a little bit too tight and that caused problems. Um, but, uh, tape really works. Uh, get the, uh, the kind of tape, um, oh, what's it called? It's like that tan, super, super strong tape. Um, I'll try to remember what it is, but, uh, yeah, if you find like a hotspot coming on or something, put some tape on it. Um, but yeah, you'll see, um, in, uh, this triple crown series that, um, the documentary series that I've got coming out with Rob from training for ultra pretty soon. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of, at all the aid stations, at all of these 200 milers, people are getting their feet worked on. So it's not, uh, it's something that everybody deals with. Everybody deals with foot issues. Um, and it's just like, you just got to kind of work your way through it. Um, but yeah, I've kind of learned to just deal with it. Um, and if you get that pain, like it can feel like it's debilitating. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just pain. It's just signals in your brain. Um, and so, uh, I've had a couple of races where I've had really bad blisters, uh, and it made me sit down. It made me, you know, feel like a wimp and just want to like walk and want to quit. But then after a while you just you accept it and you move on and you just start going again. And, uh, eventually the pain kind of does go away. Um, but, uh, let's see here. Um, yeah. Uh, so Miguel asked a question about, so this is, yeah. So Henry jumped in here. Awesome. He's still here. Uh, he uses squirrels nut butter to avoid blisters. Uh, that is a good point. I forgot to mention that. Um, I do that as well. Uh, I'll put that in between my toes and I'll put, uh, um, around my heel, uh, especially if I feel, uh, if, if I feel anything coming on in the middle of the race, that's really good to do is to apply some squirrels nut butter. Um, let's see. Drew says I did a 50 K last year at run Woodstock, Michigan. You did nice. I was there. I did the hundred there. Uh, this year I'm jumping to the 50 mile. Any advice? I'll crew. Nice. Uh, cool, man. Thanks. That'd be awesome. If you want to crew, uh, for the FKT, uh, advice from jumping from 50 K to 50 miler. Um, those are, um, I think, uh, biggest advice is just make sure that you're eating enough early on and eating the right amount early on. 
because you're going to have an extra 17 miles. Uh, it's going to take you, uh, I mean, depending on how fast you are, but an average person, you know, on a hilly to mountainous course, I mean, that's going to take you an extra couple hours. So you got to plan for that. Uh, and you got to make sure that you're getting your nutrition in early. Uh, you got to stay hydrated. Uh, basically, you got to protect yourself against the elements. Is it going to be raining? Is it going to be muddy? Are you going to need? Um, you're probably going to be able to wear the same shoes. Probably going to be able to wear the same. Your, your gear is probably not going to need to be different. I don't think you need anything extra for a 50 miler that you don't already have for a 50K. Um, yeah, I mean, I say the biggest thing is just planning for that extra energy. Uh, spend throughout the the next the last couple hours of the race uh and especially if you're doing okay so if you're doing run woodstock in michigan um yeah that's not that's not crazy terrain or anything so you're not going to need to worry about uh hiking poles um i mean you could use them if you want them but oh yeah joel says luco tape uh that's the one i was trying to remember so thank you joel you win uh the prize for thinking of the name of that tape so thank you very much but yeah it's called luco tape oh and john jumped in here too and said the same thing <laughs> okay you both get a prize um but yeah that is that's the best tape it's expensive um but look it up on amazon whatever go get it and uh that's the kind of tape you want to prevent blisters but Marisol says, Ryan, go for the FKT. I live too far to crew, but I'll cheer for you. Awesome. Maybe we'll live stream it. I don't know. <laughs> uh, Miguel says, toe socks, yay or nay? Uh, I go back and forth. Every year I feel like I go back and forth on whether I like toe socks or whether I don't. Um, I think it's just totally personal preference. Um, Exoskin currently, the ones I'm wearing are toe socks and... Yeah, I like them. Uh, they seem to help. Um, but I've also had times where I've just hated toe socks and I've gone with just regular socks for a whole season. Um, but yeah, that's a, uh, I think it's totally personal preference. Uh, Evan must have spotted my Apple Watch. Uh, it says favorite complications on your Apple Watch home screen. Um, so I have different I have different screens for different times of the day, uh, whether it's like morning or evening or whatever. But I pretty much always have uh, the complication with the app Home Run because half of my house is run on uh, Apple HomeKit devices or plugs. So I've got this. I've pretty much got that complication on here all the time, so I can trigger any of the scenes I need in the house, which is awesome. Uh, really fun. Um, what else do I use? I, I usually have the activity on there just cause I think that's kind of cool to look at. I have the stride, uh, app on there and then I have the weather during the mornings, like when I'm getting ready for runs and stuff, I'll have the current weather and the wind speed and all of that. Um, yeah, those are my favorite ones. And then I go back, I use all the different screens. I like them all. I think it's fun to change it up. Uh, let's see here. Dylan says, I'm running my own. I went about eight miles today, but didn't officially track it. Nice. Uh, asked about a $60 watch to run with, but obviously, yeah, no GPS, uh, is with a cheap watch. What about a best 150 or less GPS? I'm guessing you're saying GPS tracker. Um, I don't know if you're going to find a GPS watch for $150 or less. Um, I don't know. Shas Dave Dillon, Chase the Summit. If he's still here, maybe he'll jump in the chat. I don't know. I think the cheapest you're probably going to, the probably the best bang for your buck GPS watch out there is, um, well, not maybe not the best, but the one that goes on sale all the time and it usually gets pretty cheap. I think it's called the Gar Garmin 245. Uh, that one's, almost always every couple months it goes on sale like 50% off. And I mean, it's a solid running watch, decent GPS, um, not a whole lot of bells and whistles, but you can probably find that one for close to 150 when it goes on sale. Um, uh, 
Yeah. Okay. So, uh, CH Sus government says last year you were working with that company that identified biomarkers and provided a report giving nutritional advice. Do you find this info to be helpful in regards of your running and overall health? Yes. Uh, so he's talking about, uh, this company called inside tracker and, um, I worked with them for a little bit. We did one test and, um, it was, it was like a sponsored video, uh, sort of thing. And, um, I felt like I got a lot of useful information out of it. Um, I think it would have been better had I gotten four or five tests in a row, uh, and been able to track how my biomarkers were changing. Um, unfortunately I didn't have that opportunity. Uh, but I think if you've got the money to spend, if you've already got shoes, you've already got the gear, you've already got the watch you want, you've already like, you don't need to spend, you know, money on like that stuff that, uh, I guess you kind of, uh, you know, some of those things that are, that I would get before that. Um, I mean, I don't know, I guess you could argue either way because it is your health. Uh, so if you're finding yourself that you have maybe some issues that you don't know, what the root of them are. Like you're trying to work through some health issues. Maybe getting an inside tracker report would help. Um, I think also, you know, finding like a local nutritionist or something that can help you work through things like that will be able to do um, some similar things if you're finding yourself in a situation where you need assistance uh, figuring out uh, your health or your well being or your nutrition. Um, but if if that's all fine, like you're not in need of help in that area, like, uh, like you're not whatever. Uh, and you've already got your gear and everything. And then I think going with something like inside tracker is a great thing to do to kind of like fine tune your performance, fine tune your nutrition, um, because they can help. I mean, they identified, uh, several things last year when I did that test, uh, several like nutrients and vitamins that I was a little bit low on. Um, most of it came back that I was fine. Um, I'm pretty much plant-based and so I get, I get plenty of all the, a lot of that stuff. I mean, there was a few things, a few supplements I started taking. Um, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was kind of useful. Um, but again, I think it would be probably most useful if you used it for a year, maybe got tested every two months or something like that. Uh, oh, Joel says the Garmin 235 is $169 on Amazon Prime. There you go. Uh, go get it. Um, Dylan, uh, go find it on Amazon, 169 bucks. It's, I mean, it's a good watch. Uh, I actually... Actually, uh, I know several people that have it, um, and it's just, it's fine. Uh, John says, Amazfit Stratos. Yeah, you can go with Amazfit. Um, I don't know. I've never used that. John likes it. Uh, he uses it for a lot of his runs. Uh, so I bet it's probably priced similarly. Um, yeah, Dylan. Thank you, sir. You're the best runner on YouTube. <laughs> Cool. I don't know about that, but thanks for the comment. Uh, that's cool. Sunto are currently running 50% off. I didn't know that. Uh, I got an Ambit Peak for 199 Hapless guitar photography. Wow, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I didn't realize that Sunto had a 50% off sale right now. Um, if that's the case, um, the Sunto 9 would be a really good deal. If that was 50% off, check that out. Let's see. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not finding it. But anyway, uh, let's go here. So do you have Danielle Henry says, Danielle Henry says, do you have any opinion on amp human lotion? I don't know, but I'd like to have an opinion. I'd like to try it, but I never have. Uh, there are a lot of people that um, are probably linked to that company on social media posting about it. Uh, it's been getting a lot of buzz recently. I honestly have no idea what it does, um, but if they want to send me some, I'll try it, sure. <laughs> but I'm not going to 
buy any because I have no idea what it does. But I'll try it. Like I said, uh, Joel says, I couldn't help myself and I have a grit X on the way. Yeah, nice. Um, you'll like it. I think, I mean, I think you'll like it. It's a, it's a, it's a good watch. Nice, nice, solid watch. It just works. Um, I haven't really noticed anything weird about it. I mean, the heart rate sensor is probably the best optical heart rate sensor. Um, uh, well, I don't know. I mean, it's kind of, it's, its results are pretty similar to the Apple watch. Um, if you don't know, don't, don't trash on the Apple watch. It's got, uh, I mean, even DC Rainmaker will say it's got probably the best optical heart rate watch on the market. Um, but, uh, polar grit X optical heart rate is really good. Uh, most of the tests I've been doing recently, um, it's very close, um, to the accuracy, um, that the Apple watch gives me. But if you want real heart rate accuracy, like Henry said earlier, you have to just get a chest strap. Um, I mean, that's the, that's the lowest power option. Those things will last for a year with one little coin cell battery. Um, they just work. They just, I mean, they just work, but Dimaji says, love my Garmin 935. Yeah, that's a good watch. Um, I've had a lot of Garmin's over the years. Um, started with a Forerunner 15. Um, I had another Forerunner, can't remember the name. Then I had a 910 XT, and then I had a Phoenix 3. Um, love to have the Phoenix 6, but I'm also not going to pay $900 for a watch. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah. All right, guys. Well, let me know if you have any other questions. Uh, getting really close to that one hour mark. Uh, try to keep it to about an hour or sometimes just over. Um, I don't think anything else I really wanted to talk about. Um, hope you guys are doing well out there. Uh, stay motivated. Um, yeah, things are things seem like. I don't know, depending on where you live, things are starting to open up a little bit, but I just think we need to, you know, we still need to be cautious. And as runners, I think we're doing, if we're able to run, it sounds like, you know, being physically active is, uh, helpful. Um, so, you know, socially distant, stay, you know, run by yourself. Don't do dumb stuff. Uh, Joel says rocking the polar H10 heart rate strap, but the battery died on me after a couple months. Oh, really? Um, I didn't unclip it after you. So possibly user error. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, but I do believe that it's powered on when it's clipped in. I do believe that's the case. I think it has some sort of auto shut off when it's not receiving a heart rate signal, but, uh, it does. I do remember reading in the instructions that, uh, you should unclip it for best battery life. Hapless Guitar Photography says, good show. Awesome. Love these good reviews. Thank you. <laughs> uh, Drew says, I love my Garmin 97, no, 735. Uh, worth the investment. Very accurate. I saw your redemption video. My 50K was 32.13 miles. I understand your comment on the extra miles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that course at the hallucination uh, was just a little bit long, <laughs> and it throws you off when you're doing when you're running 100 miles or however long you're running, 50 miles, whatever, and you're trying to uh, match the cutoffs like I was because I hadn't run in like three months and I decided to do a hundred miler um, after being injured for three months. Um, but yeah, we were we were riding the cutoffs the whole time. And then once we started realizing that these laps were extra miles and by the end of the race, we're going to end up running an extra three, I think it was two and a half or three miles or something. It doesn't really sound like that much, but when you're averaging like 17 minute miles or whatever, um, that can be a long time and you can get close to the cutoff. <laughs> um, yeah. Thanks for the feedback on biomarkers. Absolutely. I think, yeah, I mean, I agree. Like, I think, I think they're good. I definitely, um, 
I definitely think if you have the money, they're expensive. That's the problem. Uh, if you have the money, go for it because investing in your health is not wasted money. Um, so go for it, but definitely try to get several tests in a row over the course of a whole season or a year. Um, I think that would be the best, um, best investment. Drew says, thank you, Ryan and Henry for the advice. Absolutely. Thank you, Drew, for joining. Um, but all right, guys, uh, thank you so much. Uh, this was fun. Uh, I had a lot of fun, uh, talking to Henry, had fun hanging out with you guys, answering questions, comments. Um, yeah, whenever I'll let you know, whenever I, if I ever do plan this, uh, FKT, I'd love to do it sometime soon, sometime this year. Um, and, uh, maybe, maybe I'll, maybe it'll be fun. Maybe I'll fail miserably. Who knows? But, um, we're going to try. <laughs> and then, uh, depending on what happens with races this year, I'll keep updating you guys with that. Um, as of right now, the biggest news that I want you all to know. So everyone that's still here, uh, and everyone that's watching this on the replay that made it to the end, um, we have, um, I, now I need to check the date just to make sure. Um, yeah, we have set a release date for the triple crown documentary training for ultra series. Uh, it's going to be out on Amazon. Uh, and it is going to be the first episode is going to release on May 28th. So that is just a little over three weeks. Um, I still have a lot of work to do. It'll be finished. It'll be wrapped up here in about the next week or so. And then we're going to get the distribution going. We're going to get, um, uh, we're going to get some like press, uh, hopefully some people will be watching it early. Um, actually Henry's going to watch it. He's going to watch at least a couple episodes early and, uh, write up a story about it. So, um, that'll be really fun, but yeah, there's going to be, uh, there's going to be a good deal of social media, like announcements and everything going on. But wanted you guys to hear it. We literally just decided the release date like this afternoon, <laughs> like hours ago. So you guys are some of the first people to hear that this documentary series is coming out May 28th. And then the plan is to release, uh, an episode a week. There's going to be six episodes and, uh, yeah, it's going to be a blast. Uh, I cannot wait for you guys to see this. This has been such a fun process for me, but it's also been such a time consuming process. Um, the amount of work that goes into making a documentary series is just, I mean, it's, it's incredible. And I have so much respect for people that do it for a living, um, and do it over and over back to back. Um, yeah, I'm going to be excited to just, after this is over, just invest a whole lot of that time back into, uh, family, back into more running, back into YouTube. Uh, so yeah, but it's, uh, I cannot wait for you guys to see it. It is, it's coming. I, I think it's coming along really well. Um, and it's fun. It's, it's going to be a good watch. Anybody that really likes ultra running is going to really identify with, uh, the whole process and what Rob goes through. And, uh, if you like, uh, you know, pictures and videos and scenery of mountains and really cool landscapes, that's going to, you guys are going to be liking it. You guys are going to like it. So, uh, tell your friends, uh, get some watch parties together. Um, yeah. St. Michael hikes. Uh, just throw a couple of these last ones up here and then I'm going to get off. Uh, St. Michael hikes says there's a huge difference between hundred and 103, especially mentally if you're not expecting it, you're right. Uh, and especially if you're running 17, 18 minute miles, because it's going to take an extra hour. <laughs> Uh, Marisol says, woohoo, looking forward to watching the documentary. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Can, uh, I cannot wait for you guys to see it. Uh, Eric says, thanks Ryan. So thank you all with that. I'm going to, uh, say goodbye and I will see you guys again soon. Um, maybe in a few days, I think, 
what they say, Tuesday. Tuesday seems like a good day. Uh, if you guys like it, uh, give me a thumbs up. Um, I think Tuesdays are a good day to do this. So I will see you guys again soon. Thanks. Bye.